Paul, again, I do want to thank all of you for carving out some time out of your schedule. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit backwards, uh, as is typical for a lot of Catholic school activities and meetings. We're actually going to finish the Zoom call with some prayer and conversation versus starting with it. Just figuring that having the opportunity to hear from a few folks, have a few introductions, might actually aid a little bit in the prayer and conversation uh, to come. And I do want to thank you on behalf of the network. Uh, my name is Patrick Slattery. For those that I may not have met, which I hope at this point is very few of you, uh, just given my role as executive director in the network being in year four, um, I, I have varying degrees of involvement at the school. So some of you I know quite well and have worked very closely with you. Others I may have met in passing at, at a board meeting. But uh, again, appreciate you all uh, being here for this call. Part of why uh, we look to pull this together today, I can kind of come at this from two angles. You know, the brothers have uh, just a, a beautiful charism and spirituality that often talks about the value of enduring personal relationships, about the need to help support, encourage, and edify one another and work together. And so certainly having an opportunity to, like this to come together and, and discuss this, this governance as a shared ministry, it aligns quite well to the beauty that is the Zavarian brothers' charism but I could also look at it from the angle that uh, this past summer, 150 Catholic schools across the country closed, largely uh, expedited by the impact of COVID-19. And in the last decade, a thousand Catholic schools have closed across this country. So the, the governing, the managing, the leading of Catholic institutions is harder now than it ever has been in the history of Catholic education. And sadly, I think one of the things that Catholic education has, has done well uh, to a fault is, is embracing this notion of subsidiarity, of you know, embracing that notion that yes, we are all unique locally governed institutions, but I think where strength lies in this network is recognizing that we are all a part of a greater whole. And that is a reason, another reason to come together here today. These, these issues of sustainability in Catholic education I think we'll achieve them better if as a network we recognize again that we're a part of this greater whole, that we're all partners in the shared mission that the brothers have given to us. So with that, I'm gonna have a few folks uh, introduce themselves. We're gonna go through a series of introductions. Uh, ben and I will come back up and talk a little bit about some offerings at the office. And again, we'll wrap things up with a prayer. But I do wanna at this point in time, uh, ask Brother Dan Scala to unmute and he is gonna share a welcome on behalf of the congregation. So Brother Dan. Thank you, Patrick, and um, hello, everybody. It's great to see so many familiar faces out there. Um, <clears throat> first, let me say that I want to express my gratitude and the gratitude of the brothers to all of you board members. Um, you are full partners with us in our mission, and you know better than I what a significant difference you have made for the schools where you serve on the board. Um, you know, all of this, what we do, has been entrusted to us by Theodore Riken, our founder, and by the many people, board members through the years and the brothers, um, all of these people who have come before us and upon whose shoulders we stand. Um, <clears throat> I also want to recognize the phenomenal leadership of our headmasters, presidents, and principals, because if I didn't, I'd hear about it. Um, but no, um, I think every, as uh, Patrick said, so many Catholic schools are struggling, have closed, due to the pandemic and a host of other issues. But I think the difference for our schools has to do with the leadership, the leadership of the board and the leadership of the school, the presidents and principals, headmasters. Um, that's why our schools are thriving. And uh, I think it's because of collaboration, community, and a focus on mission. And um, yes, there are many unique challenges this year, but there are also uh, many reasons to be hopeful as we listen to the voices in our communities. 
like people all over the world, the Severian brothers have experienced the pandemic um, with its restrictions. And in some ways it's been good, other ways bad. Life certainly is more complex. It requires a lot more creativity and hard work, as you certainly know. And um, as you would expect, there's a wide range of responses depending on the individual and the community circumstances. Um, just as we're on Zoom today, I think all of us have adapted to greater reliance on technology to communicate. You know, um, we've been able to be with one another in prayer, for meetings, in celebrations, such as our celebration for our brother jubilarians, who together have served for 830 years to our mission. Our general council, which ordinarily meets face to face during the course of the year, uh, has been forced to meet monthly through Zoom. Um, and of course, that means that uh, just yesterday, we had a meeting with the leadership of uh, the brothers in the Congo. And tomorrow, we'll have a meeting through Zoom with the leadership of the brothers in Kenya. It's a, a way for us, it's a new way for us to connect with them uh, and to support them in their work. Because just like here in the US, the pandemic is worldwide. It has shut down all of their schools and uh, placed many restrictions on them and uh, the people uh, in their communities. Before the travel restrictions, um, I had the opportunity to visit with most of the brothers in the US and all of the brothers in Kenya. Uh, and I had the opportunity while in Kenya to visit our brand new school that some of you have supported may know about St. Xavier's High School in Bungoma. Uh, we were very impressed with the leadership of the school. And um, we also, several of us, had the opportunity in February to visit Rouge, where the order was founded, and to get um, to celebrate with our oldest school, their 175th anniversary of their foundation. Um, this school, of course, was founded by Theodore Riken himself. And um, it was a great opportunity for us to connect with the people. It was quite a wonderful celebration involving so many different people in the community. Uh, both parents, graduates, local officials, and so on. And um, I got to speak to all of them at a program. And um, I said, I hope you don't expect me to speak Flemish because <laughs> I can barely do the English. No, I could speak in English and they all understood, which uh, says a lot about their educational system. Um, so we also, while we were there, got to visit our Belgian brother. Um, we are an international community, as you know, and just as a community, we're working through the challenges of getting to know another culture, but we've experienced great joys of brotherhood among us, even though some of us don't speak the same language and certainly come from many different cultures. I believe our fundamental belief is that all men and women are beloved. God loves each and every one of us. And so we must love them. Our, the divine image is in all of creation. We know that. And so I think we approach the environment and all people with reverence and gratitude. Um, and surely, I believe one of the God's gifts to us through this pandemic is to let us know we're not alone. That all of us, as the Pope Francis said, we're all in the same boat as the disciples were. <clears throat> and um, 
I'm very confident that working together, we're going to get through this um, because no matter what our circumstances, Jesus promised, I am with you always until the end of the age. The world around us is in a sorry state for a lot of different reasons. And Pope Francis in his recent encyclical Fratelli Tutti, which translated as on fraternity and social friendship, writes about the world. And I think he calls us and our focus and our mission during this time is to pay attention to what's happening now, to the present moment, and to try to look with the eyes of faith and see with love and compassion all of those who are in that boat with us. So what do we do when the pandemic is over? Everybody keeps asking that question, and I don't pretend to have an answer to that really big question, but I think we can look to the words of Pope Francis when uh, he said, we'll come out of this changed, and there is no going back. And his hope, and he asks us to dare to dream of a life lived in solidarity with one another, where the last are taken into consideration just as the first are. And that's a question for us in our sponsored schools as well. How can we make this solidarity even more a reality in our sponsored schools? Just last week, I received a gift. I'm always happy to open gifts. Um, and I received a gift from a graduate of 1962 from St. Uh, Xavier's in Louisville. And he wrote a very simple line. He said, it was the little things that taught respect for the other, as simply as playing Central High School in basketball in Dunbar as well in Lexington. He says this was the 50s South. Um, of course, it was terribly segregated and no white school would play the black school but our principal at the time, Brother John Joseph, said, we're going to do it. And so he, with the, the team and the entire student body, went and played first in Louisville and then to Dunbar High School in Lexington. To me, that simple action was a sign that another way is possible. That's what Brother John Joseph was trying to teach. Um, and so I want to thank all of you for all that you do. We could not do Severian Mission without you. As I've often said, you are the mission. And through you, God's light really does shine through the darkness. So I, I ask you to pay attention to the little things and perhaps we'll find that another way is possible after this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Dan. Appreciate your comments and your presence. Uh, at this point, I wanna introduce uh, Brother Art Kalaman, who is going to uh, offer a welcome from the uh, perspective of chair of the members. And uh, we may pop up a slide as well to just remind everybody who the members are. Brother. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Uh, and again, I want to echo Brother Dan's welcome and appreciation to everybody for the, the time and the talent that you give us on behalf of Zavarian Brothers Sponsored Schools. I think as you know, Brother Dan mentioned, uh, the long history of Zavarian education going back to the days in Bruges and the days of the founder. Uh, I find I've been involved with Zavarian schools for a number of decades in different ways, mostly at the governance level. One of the great questions in the history of Zavarian education is, who the heck are the corporate members and what the heck do they do? So just as a little refresher before we do some introductions, I want to just remind people that the, uh, the group that you're about to be introduced to, at least hopefully most of us, uh, the corporate members are individuals who are appointed by the leadership of the congregation to serve as the corporate members of each one of the 
incorporated schools in the US. As most flowcharts, it's, it's hard to picture this, but as opposed to the way this looks on the flowchart that just went up on the screen, the members are not a, a separate group, separate from all of the schools. The members, in fact, are a group of individuals who serve as the corporate members for each of the sponsored schools in the United States, with a couple of little uh, modifications for schools where we, we share sponsorship with the local diocese. Uh, so as members of each individual school, we are essentially partners with you who serve on the board of directors, partners in the governance of the school. But our role in governance is essentially a fairly limited one in terms of the governance of an individual school. In that setting, we exercise on behalf of the brothers the reserve powers for the corporation, which most of which you're probably familiar with. The most familiar ones are the appointment of the boards every year and reappointments and designation of the board leadership and occasionally approval for any changes in the corporate documents, articles of, of incorporation and bylaws and so forth. And then anything that affects the real property of the corporation. And usually the most common thing is uh, debt that encumbers the real estate. Uh, but those are essentially the legal requirements under church law to maintain Catholic identity and have adequate control over sponsored ministries. The more important thing we do and what we really spend most of our time on are the, the softer things that are mechanisms of support for mission continuation and mission alignment in the schools, things such as essentially uh, establishing the sponsorship office. We select and hire the leader of the office, Patrick in this case, and he selects and hires his staff. And we oversee the programs that we carry on through the staff of the sponsorship office. Those are the probably the, the more important things we do to help you in your role as leaders in governance for Zavarian schools to carry out mission. You know, we talked a little bit at the beginning of the meeting about the challenge to Catholic schools, particularly Catholic secondary schools in the current environment, uh, and the challenges of sustainability, affordability, accessibility, et cetera, et cetera, are really critical. But uh, as some of you know, my, my day job is in Catholic healthcare. Uh, one of the one of our mantras in Catholic healthcare is no margin, no mission. You know, if, if there is no margin, the mission can't be sustained. But also, no mission, no, no mission, the margin isn't worth anything. So, just as important as sustainability is sustainability into the future, with a continued alignment and commitment to carry on the mission of all Ozarian sponsored schools. So again, I thank you for your share and that responsibility, and for all that you do for our schools. Thank you, Brother Art. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, the members if they're on the call. I know there's a number of them to just unmute when I call your name, and I'm just going to ask them to spend uh, a minute introducing themselves. So, Brother Larry Harvey, we'll have you go first. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Brother Larry, I uh, serve on the members, work uh, as part of the leadership team for the brothers at our office in Baltimore, and uh, have the privilege of serving on a few of our boards, uh, Malden Catholic, it's very in, in Brooklyn where I serve as chair, uh, St. Bernard's in uh, Uncasville where I also have the privilege of serving as chair. Uh, and I'm grateful for all the work that Patrick and Ben and Brother Richard did to put this together and everyone's participation this afternoon. Thank you, Brother Larry. How about Brother Brian? We got you. Yeah. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm also a member of the General Council of the Brothers elected uh, two summers ago. I live in Middletown, Connecticut, where I am the retired headmaster of Xavier High School. Um, I'm also on several boards. I'm on the boards of St. Xavier Louisville, Lowell Catholic, and Zavarian High School, Brooklyn. And between those boards and previous experiences on boards, it's so nice to see uh, so many faces that I recognize. Uh, I must single out one of them, Don Kelly from St. X Louisville, who I taught back in the 1970s. I think he's the only one on the screen here who has that honor and whose, whose honor I have of having taught him. So thanks very much, great to be with all of you. Thank you, Brother Brian. How about Rosemary? I think I saw you earlier. Rosemary, you might need to unmute if you're uh, still on one of these pages here. All right, there we go. Oh, Sorry, go I got it. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rosemary Kilpatrick. Um, I have a son who graduated from Xavier High School 
And while he was there, I was on the Home and School Association and then was asked to be on the board at Xavier where I served for four terms on um, advancement audit liaison and nominating committees. I also did work on two of the strategic plans for the school and one of the mission effectiveness, um, mission effectiveness studies. And during this time, I also worked at a Catholic elementary school in the area. Um, I would just like to say, as everyone before me has, thank you so much to everyone for all your hard work during this stressful time. And um, I pray for you every day. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, not sure if I saw her on the call. Dr. Patricia Thomas, are you out there? Okay. Uh, Patricia has uh, been with the members uh, for the last four years, I think has good council ties. I can, uh, yep, Brother Larry's nodding yes, uh, and then uh, resides in the Virginia area. How about, uh, again, I don't know that I saw him, uh, Dr. Bill Donahue, are you on the call? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thanks. Yes, I'm the uh, head of school at Columbia Grammar and Prep uh, on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. This was supposed to be my retirement job. I just hadn't anticipated COVID. Um, prior to that, I worked for 27 years in a public school district in Westchester, culminating as superintendent. And uh, prior to that, I worked for 14 years at Good Counsel High School, where I graduated in 1971. Um, and at various times, I've been on the board of uh, Zavarian in Brooklyn and Good Counsel, just before they moved, actually. Um, it's a, uh, when Art asked me uh, to be on the members, I uh, jumped at the chance. It's an honor to be involved in Zavarian schools in, in any way at all. As I'm sure all of you board members know, this is an exceptional, exceptional organization. And uh, it's an honor. And I, I, I thank especially every board member. Um, the greatest board members in the world are the, are the ones who have their head in the work and ask the hard questions that help us move forward. And, and, and it's much harder work than being a member, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And I think we had uh, Dr. Patricia just joined us. Uh, Patricia, would you be able to unmute and just do a quick introduction? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'm finished classes and about to run to another meeting, you know, school life. Um, so uh, my name is Patricia Thomas. I am an alumna of Our Lady of Good Counsel High School. Um, Bill Donahue actually let me in uh, when he was doing admissions. And um, I served on the board of Good Counsel for nine years, and my current position is director of advising and wellness at the School for Ethics and Global Leadership in Washington, D.C. It's a, um, a semester school. High school juniors come here, spend a semester with us, talk a lot about ethics and leadership and how to solve the world's problems. And um, I support them in doing that. And I also teach French and Spanish. Thank you, Patricia, I appreciate it. How about Chris Delulo, if you're out there? There we go, can you hear me? Yep. So my name is Chris Delulo. I am a um, graduate of Mount St. Joseph High School in Baltimore. I currently live in Annapolis, Maryland, and I, I work in Washington, D.C. In the, in the private sector. Um, I, I was asked to sit on the board at Mount St. Joe uh, a number of years ago, which I did, and then I, I succeeded Urban Lime Cooler as the board chair for a number of years. Uh, the years I was chairing the board at Mount St. Joe, they were quite active years, so there was um, I know what what many of you board members are going are going through right now, and uh, you have my sympathy. So um, I've been on the members group for several years, and it's been a great experience for me to sort of get um, connected with all of the schools uh, and all of the issues uh, that are going on with respect to mission and things of that sort. Um, you know, working with uh, with the members group and with Patrick and with Ben. Um, it, it's great exposure to what's what's going on within this really wonderful network of of people and families um, around Zavarian education. So I want to thank everyone for all of uh, all of your time and all of your energy towards what it is that we're trying to accomplish. 
and um, I look forward to continuing working with everyone. Thank you, Chris. And we'll move to Gary Ulmer, who I see out there. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully we can visit in person sometime uh, in the future. First, thanks for all that you do to make our schools uh, a very special place, um, very special places. In my case, uh, graduate of St. X in Louisville, served on the board for a number of years, was board chair for a number of years, and now I'm uh, chairing our $51 million uh, capital campaign, which has been interesting um, in this COVID situation. But it's an honor and a privilege uh, for me to, um, to be a member and be a part of the, uh, uh, the network and really continue my, my service at, uh, at, at St. X. So again, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. And also on the call, but not in a position to talk, just given some of the, the background uh, where he's at, uh, I do want to welcome Dr. Ed Hardeman, who's been a corporate member here for four years, uh, headmaster at St. John's Prep up in Danvers. Uh, just a great resource for the network as a whole and all of his colleagues across the network. So happy to have uh, Ed listening in as well. So uh, in addition, Brother Dan and Brother Art are uh, round out the 10 members. Uh, again, as Brother Art had mentioned, a name that you see a lot on some of the bylaws and the handbooks, but wanted to definitely give an opportunity for you to put some names to the faces. So before we uh, jump into the prayer, uh, which will uh, kind of wrap up our time together, uh, Ben Horgan and I are just going to um, highlight real quickly two documents that you've already received and just want to encourage you if you haven't had a chance to take a look at them yet to, to visit. I do want to speak to the newly revised XBSS board handbook. You know, the first half of the document certainly speaks a lot to the governance pieces. You can look at that at your leisure. I, I would encourage you to take a look at the entire second half of the board handbook. It is a brand new piece that we worked on last school year. We adopted the National Association of Independent Schools principles for good board governance, but we overlaid with it the Zavarian charism and mission. And there's a lot of reflective pieces in there for you as board directors. Uh, to, to really consider in terms of what it means to be a partner in mission, what it means to own that mission. There are reflective questions and uh, different, different principles in there that schools could even measure themselves to see how well they're doing from that perspective of owning the mission and perpetuating the mission. So I encourage you to take a look at that book. And I'm going to have at this point Ben Horgan introduce himself. You've heard his name a few times now and he's going to explain the other resource. Ben? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all. I'm Ben Horgan. I'm the formation director for the sponsorship office. This is my third year in the role. Uh, I come from uh, experience in Jesuit uh, education as an administrator and in ministry roles there. I like to say that I, uh, I learned their secrets and I've come back to fight for good. I was formed by the network. I'm a proud graduate of St. John's High School in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. It's been a, such a blessing be back and serving the network that formed uh, my spiritual life and my path and vocation in Catholic education. Uh, so my role as formation director, I work with our various school stakeholders, including yourselves uh, as board directors, but also our administrators, uh, our campus ministers, our, our faculties and staff members uh, and students uh, for formational and professional development programming, uh, building collaboration across our schools, um, but also finding ways that we can enhance and grow our Zavarian mission. On my best days, I'm a, I'm a switchboard operator uh, because of the privileged view that I have of, of each of our schools. Uh, I get to connect people who have never met before and watch them grow and build this relationship and this brand of being Zavarian. So it really is a blessing for this work. I want to talk to you very briefly about this uh, document on the right side of your screen called Partners in Mission. Uh, this document uh, has been developed over the past 18 months and even uh, work before then uh, to update our the language that we use as the varying schools in the 21st century, particularly with fewer brothers uh, within our schools. What does it mean for us as lay leaders to uh, to take ownership of the Zavarian charism that's been entrusted with us? And how does that continue to evolve and adapt to meet the needs of the students in front of us today? Um, we have 13 schools that are that serve very unique uh, student demographics or in very unique geographical contexts. Um, but we wanted to find something that would unite them in their understanding of what it meant to be Zavarian on a daily basis. We, you might have heard of, of uh, the language of uh, Zavarian values and Zavarian calls. 
Um, and I won't go into too much detail about the specifics of those, allow you to read that in the text, but I view our Zaverian values as the navigational buoys that guide us in the open water of Catholic education. If we're practicing these values um, that the brothers have passed on to us uh, in, our, in our discernment, in our uh, decision-making, and in our relationship with one another, then we're gonna stay on course with our mission. Our calls, however, call us to greater depth. And uh, you'll notice inside the text that there are intentionally questions there that guide us into deeper reflection. And these um, might affirm what we're already doing as institutions, but challenge us to embrace our charism at a deeper level. And these vary from looking at our academic program to looking at the, um, the diversity, um, racially, socioeconomically, and so forth within our schools, as well as the Catholic identity of our institution. So I encourage you to use this document, uh, perhaps you know, at the beginning of a board meeting or a committee meeting, just to take a page or two of it, take a topic uh, and reflect on it in the back of the text. If you're very new um, to this language of spirituality and charism, no worries. We included a glossary of Zaverian terms. It's at a very basic level to unpack uh, this unique language that we use uh, to describe ourselves. Thank you, Ben. So I appreciate that. Uh, at this point in time, we've been talking at you for uh, about 32 minutes. So uh, we do want to carve out a little bit of time uh, to practice what we preach and uh, share together in prayer. We are going to also uh, give you a little opportunity to uh, break out into some small group rooms just to allow you the chance to just introduce yourself to a small collection of other random board colleagues from across the network. Uh, and from that, we'll pull you back in for a closing prayer. So at this point, I'm going to have one other uh, key colleague in our XBSS office introduce himself and uh, start the opening prayer. Brother Richard. Hey, good afternoon. And I, too, would like to welcome everybody to this uh, session. And, and thank you for the dedication and the service you're providing for our schools. And... Uh, Ask God to bless you for, the, for your abundant kindness to us. I've been the uh, Associate Director for the Severian Brothers Sponsorship Office for the past five years, and I've served on any number of boards over the past 40 years of uh, Severian schools and also uh, schools in the Archdiocese of Boston, diocesan schools as well. Um, let us begin this uh, session with this opening prayer and mindful we are always in God's presence, loving God, as we prayerfully reflect on the past, assess the present, and ponder the future with one another. Grant us the strength and wisdom to own the mission in our own Severian Brothers sponsored school. Help us embrace the charism of the Severian Brothers as a source of inspiration and strength as we together embrace the future of our schools with hope. We ask these things on behalf of the students entrusted to our care and for those still to come. Amen. Following readings is based on a description of the Zaverian charism. The Zaverian brothers see all members of the Zaverian schools, board directors, administration, faculty, staff, students, parents, alumni, and benefactors as partners in their shared mission of Catholic education. As partners in mission, we freely respond to the call to minister in a Zaverian brother sponsored school. We commit ourselves to an ongoing personal and communal formation that fosters the orientation of ourselves and our students toward God. We live that orientation without privilege or entitlement, seeking to find God and to be formed by the common, ordinary, unspectacular flow of everyday life. So in a few moments, uh, we're gonna break you up into randomized small groups um, with Zoom. If you, if you haven't experienced that in Zoom, uh, I'll be uh, moving you forward. If for some reason you get kicked out, please re-enter the meeting um, using the link that you originally uh, used to access uh, the group. Um, but there's nothing you'll need to do on your end. But I think uh, as we sit in, in prayer today, I think it can be challenging in our busy lives, especially in, in this time where the days seem to um, 
to run together. We might feel like on a hamster wheel uh, of, of consecutive uh, sameness of, of just being uh, in our homes or in our work on a computer and isolated. Um, this is an opportunity for us to reflect and center ourselves, but to share ourselves in community with others, perhaps with strangers that we've never encountered before. So you appreciate your vulnerability there. But we invite you just to, uh, to share and reflect on your experience. So first we'd like to you to, uh, when we uh, enter small groups, just to take a moment to introduce yourself uh, to your colleagues. There'll be about four or five others within your group. Um, and then we ask you to reflect on these two questions. As we prayerfully reflect on the past, assess the present and ponder the future in our schools, what encouragement do you find or what challenges uh, or challenges you in the notion that all board uh, directors must own our Zaverian mission? And our second question is to you, what does it mean to be a partner in the mission of the XBSS? I'll give us about 30 seconds or so of silence to begin contemplating this, and then I'll be opening up the small group rooms, and that process takes about a minute or so for you to move. Um, and I'll be checking in if there are any issues. Thank you all. Well, as you are all trickling back in here, I uh, hope that the breakouts afforded you a little bit of time to share with each other, get to know some of your colleagues uh, across the network. Um, we'll pop up the closing prayer here in a second. So again, uh, dear God, grant us the strength and wisdom to serve as stewards of this shared Zavarian mission. As those given the responsibility to ensure our schools are places of growth and learning, we ask for your blessing on our leadership. We pray for your continued guidance in all our undertakings as we strive to fulfill the spiritual aspirations that Theodore James Rankin, our founder, had for this congregation. Amen. Amen. I've got our contact info up there. If you do want to reach out to any of us, I think uh, as Ben had mentioned, you know, our, our purpose, our office, and, and the work that Brother Richard, Ben, and I do is to try and be a convener of ideas, a convener of best practices, help uh, different schools across the network, leverage the talent and resources that exist in all of you. So if we could be of any support in any way to your uh, role as a board leader, uh, we encourage you to touch base with us. As we look through the rest of the school year, we are looking to pull together at a later point in time some topics uh, surrounding diversity and the board's role. There's a lot of issues in, in society today and within our schools that I know many of you at the board level are tackling in addition to the school level. So we are going to be looking to uh, reconvene another one of these sessions down the road, uh, speaking specifically to board leadership, school leadership as it relates to issues of diversity, equity, racial justice, inclusion. So with that, uh, again, thank you all for uh, making this a, a part of your day and for giving us a little bit of time. And on behalf of the brothers, on behalf of the network, we're so grateful for everything that you do to help advance this mission, mission and vision within our Zavarian Brothers Sponsored School. Have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you, Pastor.